I'm wondering, though, what would then be your justification for removing Joe Biden from the ballot in Missouri? Has he engaged in your mind in some kind of insurrection? Uh, there have been allegations that he's engaged in insurrection. How so? And all there have no. Please let me finish. There have only been. You allegations. can't say something like that and not back it up. What, what do you mean? I am continuing, but you interrupted me before I could back it up. Go ahead. Are you sir. scared of the truth? Oh, let I'm not terrified of the truth at all. It seems like you there might be. Let's been, hear what you have to there say. There have only been allegations against what allegations? President Trump. President Trump has never been. Um, uh, adjudicated guilty sure. in a court of law. What did Joe Biden do in your mind that equates insurrection? What allegations are you talking about? Um, I have I have seen allegations from the lieutenant governor of Texas that has said that the that uh, Joe Biden has has uh, has an, in, uh, uh, been part of insurrection or rebellion. We've seen the president. Uh, sorry, the governor of Florida say the same thing. Insurrection Those are over what? 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 What did the governor of Texas say that that Joe Biden was causing an insurrection over? If you're going to make the I, claim, give me give me some specifics. Are you just going to oh, cite me. No, wait, the wait governor minute, of Texas or Florida and not actually say what they are arguing? Do you know what they're arguing? You just watched Missouri Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft malfunction when he was asked to legally justify his threat to remove Joe Biden from the ballot in his state over Biden's alleged participation in, quote, insurrection, which is very rich coming from a Republican, I know. But his argument is basically, well, if they can do it, then we can do it, too. But it literally doesn't work that way. And I feel like I shouldn't have to explain this to somebody who went to law school when I did not. But the CNN host is going to explain this to him as well and he's just not going to get it but let's watch all what i'm telling you is this they made allegations and all it took for the president for former president trump to be taken off the ballot in colorado and in maine were allegations we should not be a country that removes people from the ballot based on allegations i think you can agree with that i think it it depends to a degree. Oh, so because your guy can be removed you, from the ballot. My guy, not, Joe Biden is not no, my guy. You don't know who my guy is. The point is, it doesn't sir, matter. the point is that it's not clear whether the 14th Amendment is self-executing or not. In, in other words, it doesn't matter to a court at that point whether there was a conviction of Donald Trump for insurrection or not. Now, the CNN host is absolutely correct. Here's what Section 3 of the 14th Amendment actually says. Quote, no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector of president and vice president or hold any office civil or military under the United States. And then it goes on. But basically, if they have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof, but Congress may by a vote of two thirds of each house House remove such disability. So as you can see, the 14th Amendment does not state whether or not there has to be a conviction. It just says somebody may not be president if they engaged in insurrection. Now, Trump has unquestionably engaged in insurrection and gave comfort to enemies thereof. That's why states like Maine and Colorado are opting to remove him from the ballot, and rightfully so. Protecting democracy necessitates the removal of candidates who vocalize their intent to destroy democracy. And as much as I dislike Joe Biden, he hasn't engaged in a literal insurrection, so removing him from the ballot would be absurd. I shouldn't have to explain this to the Secretary of State because, again— this is somebody who went to law school. He should know this. But his threat is just him basically going tit for tat because he's mad. And he basically admitted this on Twitter, writing, What has happened in Colorado and Maine is disgraceful and undermines our republic. While I expect the Supreme Court to overturn this, if not, secretaries of state will step in and ensure the new legal standard for real Donald Trump applies equally to Joe Biden. Look, that sounds fair to me. If it is the case that Joe Biden, like Trump, stages an actual insurrection, and tries to stay in power after losing an election, then yes, by all means, disqualify him from the ballot as well. Apply it all equally. But that's not what he's talking about here. Instead, he talks about this new legal standard. New legal standard? What are you talking about? It's just a legal standard. If there's any new legal standard, it's the fact that for the first time, we're holding somebody as powerful as a former president accountable, or at least we're trying to. We'll see how it turns out when it comes to uh, the court. 
But I mean, he thinks that this just basically means that Republicans can m- remove Democrats from the ballots if Democrats can remove Republicans from the ballots. But First and foremost, that is a childish line of logic. And the difference here is that the courts made this decision, or at least one court made this decision, and another secretary of state made the decision. And we can't just ignore the most important fact. Trump committed an insurrection, which is why they're doing this. It's not like they're just choosing to remove Trump from the ballot because they don't like him. He committed a fucking insurrection. That inconvenient fact is something that he just doesn't want to acknowledge. And Colorado is well within their right to do exactly what they did based on a clear reading of the Constitution. NBC News explains Colorado's Supreme Court based its ruling on the U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment, which bars those who engaged in insurrection from running for various federal offices. Now, when it comes to Maine, it is a bit different. Quote, the Maine case is slightly different than the one in Colorado. There, the Democratic Secretary of State made the determination that Trump was ineligible for the ballot. So when it comes to Maine, you can say, yes, a Democrat removed Trump from the ballot. But when it comes to Colorado, a court made this determination. So either way, Trump actually did do what they're accusing him of doing. So it's just wild to me that he's pretending as if they're doing this just out of nowhere, just inexplicably. We're just going to take him off the ballot. He did an insurrection. I mean, it's just, it's wild to me. But since they're doing this to Trump, that means that I can do it to Biden because uh, as the Secretary of State surely knows, that's exactly how the law works. Now, he didn't specifically explain this, but the insurrection allegation that he wouldn't speak to comes from Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who made this very sound legal argument, quote, Seeing what happened in Colorado tonight makes me think, except we believe in democracy in Texas, maybe we should take Joe Biden off the ballot in Texas for allowing 8 million people to cross the border since he's been president disrupting our state far more than anything anyone else has done in recent history, Patrick said in an interview with Fox News anchor Laura Ingram. So as you can see, we're getting very strong, big-brained arguments from Republicans who want to remove Biden from the ballot. Well, they did it, so we can too. And it never ceases to amaze me how they'll decry Biden's open border policy when he's been almost as ruthless and xenophobic as Trump. But open border because he's president, so what he's doing is bad by default. It's just so ridiculous. They're so unserious. But I do want to get back to Jay Ashcroft and this interview because it was a complete disaster. And calling it a disaster would be an understatement because This was an embarrassment, and he just couldn't legally justify Biden's exclusion from the ballot. He's just pissed, and he can't say that, so he's trying to, like, cloak his butthurtness in some sort of legal justification, but he's got nothing, and that's evident. So he says that this is basically bad because it sets a precedent where you can just remove candidates from the ballots, which, again, ignores the fact that Trump literally engaged in an insurrection, but he says that, oh, this is going to be this new standard where if they do it, we do it, and this is really going to be chaotic except it doesn't work that way but let's listen to how he justifies it um the brief that i will be filing with the united supreme united states supreme court is not going to say that president trump was a bad person it's not going to say that he's a good sure. person what it's going to say is that this extrajudicial means of removing people from the ballot is catastrophic to our country if it's allowed to continue because if democrats can do it you know that Republicans will do it. And if Republicans well, will do it, then Democrats point, will do it more. To, to that point, Secretary, in order to remove President Biden from the ballot, according to your state constitution, you would need to go to court. What do you think would be your strongest argument? No, not argument? at all. Not, not no? at all. If your you state constitution Trump actually Biden. states that the Secretary of State lacks authority to assess qualifications of a candidate to determine whether to place a candidate's name on a primary ballot. That's according to section sir, sir, 115 387 of your state constitution. Sir, what I'm saying is, if the Supreme Court upholds the ruling out of Colorado, and what Which happened went to in court Colorado, to disqualify Donald Trump from the ballot. So you, according sir, to your state constitution, listening. would need to sir, go to court. Sir, sir, let's just be clear. First of sure. all, you've already said you're not an attorney and you don't know what happened in Colorado. I was happy. I know to what happened in Colorado, that. sir. What I said was that I didn't read through all of the evidence specifically to be able to qualify whether there was hearsay or not. To get back to my question, you well, said that, that you would process. decide to remove Joe Biden from the ballot in your state. According to your state constitution, which I just read to you from, it says you need to go to court. I'm asking you what you think your strongest argument is. 
and I continue to try to answer your questions, and you continue to try to tell me stuff that just isn't true. That's and not here's factual, the sir. You made, you made an accusation here, about me not knowing something. I'm trying to clarify it for you. You can choose here, to answer the well, question or just continue deflecting. What is the I strongest argument you would make in court to I, remove Joe Biden from the ballot? Go. Amazing. Listen, if you've ever doubted whether or not you're intelligent or if you have what it takes to get through school or in particular law school, just keep in mind that if this guy can do it, you can do it too. You can do anything if this guy graduated law school. Now, with that being said, though, I am thankful that he's choosing to defend this position on national television because it shows you how unserious these threats to remove Biden from the ballot are. But I just want to show you one last clip because he was very annoyed. And he should be because the CNN host kept the pressure on and good on that CNN host and it made him look like shit. So pay close attention to the end because as this interview closes, just watch his facial reactions here. We got to leave the conversation there, but I very much appreciate your time. You're welcome back anytime, sir. Thank you. Of course. Have a good day. Happy New Year. Stay with CNN News Central. We're back in just moments. Seems like somebody's fifis were hurt. Like he was actually rolling his eyes on national television. We're talking about a grown man here in a position of power. Amazing. And I've just got to ask, how did you actually expect this to go? Because you know that you can't actually use your position as Missouri Secretary of State to just remove Biden from the ballot because you're mad. Like, you know this, right? Literally, like you actually are aware that this is something that you don't have the power to do because you haven't presented a legally justifiable, well-reasoned argument for doing what you say you're going to do. So you can't just say, I'm going to do it because I'm mad and they did it. That's logic that a six-year-old wouldn't even use because by then they'd come up with better reasons to justify their actions. But you, a grown man in a position of power, can't do that. And then you're mad at the host for asking questions that you refuse to answer. It's just astonishing to me. Now, if he actually cared about democracy, he too would support Trump being removed from the ballot. I get it. He's not going to do that because he is a hack and a Trump sycophant. But the reason why you want to remove people like Donald Trump from the ballot after they engaged in insurrection is because we have to protect democracy. I get that it feels counterintuitive to say we should protect democracy by removing somebody from the ballot. But restricting somebody's right to participate in democracy is essential if that person has either engaged in insurrection or is expressing clear intent to abuse power and violate the Constitution. We have a duty to protect our democratic system by not letting people participate in it if they are against the system that they want to participate in. So protecting democracy means putting limitations on who is qualified to run. In the same way that tolerance doesn't require us to tolerate intolerance, democracy doesn't require us to allow autocrats to participate in democracy. Now, all of this is probably moot anyway, because I'd be shocked if our far-right illegitimate legitimate Supreme Court even allowed this to stand, but it's just interesting to see how detached from reality the party of law and order has become, isn't it? Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.